Hello? Wonder Hussy here in the beautiful and world famous Joshua Tree National Park. That's right, the world famous iconic landscape in the southern Mojave Desert where all these funky looking trees and giant jumbled boulders lay scattered about like a giant playground for adults. Basically, it's a wonderland for outdoor enthusiasts, in particular, rock climbers. Like these guys right here. Look at them climbing right up the face of that boulder like it was nothing at all. <laughs> See what I mean? It's basically just like a giant playground with all these really grippy granite rocks that you can climb up with ropes and carabiners if you're so inclined, or if you're just like me, you just scamper around in your hiking boots and it's a ton of fun. I'm here today with my buddy Vic Meyer. Vic is shooting a kind of like a documentary style video about a day in my life. How's that going for you, Vic? It is <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> I know, I told him, man, it's not easy to be me. It is not. I think now he believes me. Anyway, uh, we're not here to do any rock climbing today. We are here looking for a strange and kind of creepy hidden secret attraction nestled in the boulders of Joshua Tree. That's right, leave it to me to find a creepy hidden attraction in this beautiful area. You know, I do like rock climbing. I've actually been out here years ago. I went rock climbing with a friend who lives down here. And so I've done that and it's fine if that's what you're into. And you know, hiking's great too. In fact, we went on a hike earlier this morning, beautiful hiking, but I just, I like, finding those weird little secrets, weird little tucked away, off the beaten path things that most people don't know about. And especially when they have kind of an interesting and creepy story like this place does. Okay, so the thing we're going to see has to do with this old time prospector rancher who lived out in this area way back in the day before all the hipsters colonized Joshua Tree when this was nothing but old time ranchers, miners, horse thieves, all kind of no good, low down, dirty, dirty hombres hid out in all these little nooks and crannies out here. And so this guy named Bill Keys I read different things about him online. It sounded like he had gotten into some trouble with the law. I guess he used to pal around with Scotty, the guy who built Scotty's castle up in Death Valley, who was a notorious swindler. And I don't know the whole story about Scotty's castle, but somehow he bilked a bunch of investors out of their money. Well, this guy, Bill Keys, got mixed up with Scotty and he got into some trouble. Anyway, he ended up down here where he started prospecting and ranching very quietly, peacefully, back around 1910. Uh, got married, had a family, had a beautiful ranch out here. In fact, you can still tour his ranch to this day, I think. But trouble seemed to follow this poor guy. First, he got into trouble with the federal government because even though he started ranching down here in 1910, by 1938, the government had already designated this a national monument. And now they had all kinds of stipulations about how he, he can't let his cattle graze here and he can't do this and he can't do that. So he was already kind of butting heads with the authorities. And then on top of it all, I guess he had some kind of skirmish with one of the neighboring ranchers over water rights. I'm not exactly sure. I read different things online. One account said they got into some dispute over water rights. Another account said, no, nah, the neighbor was just being a jerk and possibly actually had a brain tumor and something was wrong with him and that's what was causing him to be a jerk. In any event, one night Bill Keys was driving home and I guess the neighbor guy confronted him with a shotgun and there was some kind of armed confrontation and the neighboring rancher ended up being shot dead by Bill Keys. Now after, I guess when they did the autopsy on the neighboring rancher, they did find these brain tumors in his head that they thought might have changed his personality and made him more aggressive and start this fight with Bill Keys. But I'm not sure, maybe the other, the other ranchers in the area just didn't like Bill Keys. Whatever the case, he ended up getting tried and convicted for murder and sent to San Quentin. So 
So imagine that. You live out here on this beautiful, peaceful ranch with your wife and children, and then you're gonna fight with your neighbor over whatever it is. Maybe he just has a brain tumor and wants to pick a fight. And next thing you know, you're sent up to San Quentin with some truly bad hombres. I mean, you might think you're a badass hiding out in the bad lands of Joshua Tree, but you ain't nothing compared to these gangsters, murderers, thieves, and hoodlums in San Quentin. So anyway, this poor guy, Bill Keys, he was in San Quentin for 12 years. He served 12 years before finally, he was exonerated by the same guy who wrote the Perry Mason TV show. I know this sounds like an unbelievable story, but according to what I read online, the attorney who wrote the Perry Mason show took an interest in Bill Keys and somehow got him acquitted. And so he was released from prison and he headed back down here to the beautiful desert in Joshua Tree to go back to his peaceful life in desolation with just his wife and kids. When unfortunately, things really got interesting. And that's what I'm hiking to right now. Something bad happened when Bill Keys got back from San Quentin and we're trying to find this thing, this creepy thing that kind of ties in with the rest of this story. Okay, so Vic and I are hiking along, trying to find this thing. We run into this, two, is two it? Lost souls. Two lost souls. Is this a father and a son? Yeah, I'm Matt. Okay, Matt, what's your name, sir? Luke, Matt and Luke. And they asked me, don't say what it is, but they asked me if I knew where this thing was. Okay, so I do happen to know where the thing is. I have it pinned on my map. And so they asked if they could follow me. And I was like, well, yeah, but I'm making a video. It's gonna be complicated. But they said they didn't mind being on camera because they really, you wanna find this thing, yeah. right? Well, and side note, Wonder Hussy, Matt, oh, I'm sorry, your first name? Luke. Luke. And Matt, I guess, but Luke was talking to me about wanting to be on YouTube. Oh, okay, well, it's your lucky day, guys. You're gonna be on YouTube. Okay, so That's anyway. Fine. Uh, you said your friend drew you a map? How did yeah, you get Yeah, we got, got a map. He, he, drew he has a, a hand-drawn treasure map. Do you have it on your person? Yeah, yeah. It's, Do you mind it's, if we it's, take a look oh, at it? Oh, it's, it's really uh, it's really good. Yeah, I'd it's love got, to see it. There. Oh, look. But there, but there is the map. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's a good old-fashioned treasure map. Yeah. Wow, go, go how exciting. Rocks. Imagine that. Go around the two big so rocks. So your friend said go around two big rocks. Yeah. Two big rocks. And yeah. so now we're trying to figure out which two big rocks his friend was talking about. <laughs> so they've been walking around in circles trying to find this thing. Here comes me blah blah blahing to my camera with this guy blah blah blahing to his camera falling behind me. But like I said, it's your lucky day. I do have it pinned on my map. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate all of us to this thing. Let's find the treasure. And, yes, let's find the treasure and you guys will see what it is. It's very creepy guys. You know, maybe. Do you know the history of it? I, Don't I, say I have it. But... Something in mind. You know, he's been misbehaving a little bit. He's oh, saying, okay, okay, all right. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he had to know. Okay, so I have the map pulled up. I'm looking at the pin. It's we're real close, but uh, it's just tucked away, just out of sight. It's supposed to be real easy to miss. You think we're getting warm? Why? Uh -uh. There's a trail leading this way. A trail. Okay, Vic just spotted a trail up ahead. He thinks. We might be on it. There's a lot of footprints on the ground. You could be onto something. Let me look at my map. Oh yeah, you're right. Your intuition is correct. We're heading straight towards it. If you keep walking straight, we'll get to it. Oh, somewhere up here in this jumble of rocks. Okay, I think everybody else lost faith in me. They don't think I know where I'm going. But I'm following my little blue dot on Google Maps like I always do. And I'm pretty sure it's pointing me this way. So hopefully they catch up. Okay, according to my map, we're real close to it. Like it's right here somewhere, just out of sight, hidden in one of these boulders. It could be anywhere. Oh, this is so frustrating. Oh wait, I think I see it. Oh my God, I found it. Oh my God, but 
Matt and Luke and Vic are way over there. They didn't believe me, see? Men, you know, they never want to take directions from a woman. They're way over yonder. Oh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and go in. Okay, what could be so cool hidden in this dark, creepy crevice under this boulder down this little staircase? Oh, just you wait and see. <laughs> Look at that. It's a rusted old iron door sealing off a secret chamber hidden in the rock. Why would anyone want to seal off a chamber with a giant iron door? And by the way, before this was a national park, apparently there was a big iron bar on it to lock it from the outside so that whoever or whatever was on the inside couldn't get out. Okay, you ready to see what's in this mysterious chamber? Creak. Oh, it's just a cave. <laughs> just a natural rock cave. It's real dark in here. I better turn on my flashlight. Just a small cave, big enough for mm, a third of the Manson family to hunker down in. Probably have a little campfire in here. Oh, there's no ventilation though. It looks like somebody did have a fire in here though, because it's very sooty on the ceiling. And of course, there's all kinds of hippie graffiti written all over the walls. Herbie Hancock tour. Could Herbie Hancock have been inside this creepy cave? Or were some jazz heads just following Herbie Hancock on tour and decided to take a detour and do a little hiking into this mysterious chamber. Wow, look at this. Should I close the door? Yeah, let's close the door. You know, cause it's creepy in here now, but let's close the door and imagine how creepy it would be to be locked in here, in the darkness, pitch black, no ventilation, no one to hear you scream or hear your mushroom induced ramblings, whatever the case might be. Okay, wow, there is a lot of graffiti on the walls in here, but none of this was done by old Bill Keys. Uh, I guess I better open the door to let some light in so I can narrate this. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, why did Bill Keys have this mysterious rock bunker with, you know, rock bunker, sure, you could use that to keep your canned goods, whatever, but why make this big steel door that bolts from the outside? You know, there's kind of two different theories that I read online, and one of them is, well, he was a miner and a prospector. He used this bunker to store his dynamite. You know, it's relatively cool in here. In fact, it's significantly cooler in here than it is above decks, especially in the heat of summer. You know, down here in Joshua Tree, it gets to be well over 100 degrees in the summertime. And so you don't want to keep your dynamite someplace where it would get too hot. So some folks say this bunker was just built for storing dynamite. But that's not a very interesting story. I like the other theory, and I think there might actually be some credence to this alternate theory. And that is that when Bill Keys got out of San Quentin, okay, remember, refresher, there's been a lot going on. Old Bill Keys, rancher, prospector, living his life down here, wife, kids, got into a confrontation with his neighbor, ended up shooting and killing him. Maybe it was provoked, we don't know, exonerated by Perry Mason's lawyer 12 years later, or Perry Mason's writer 12 years later, comes back down here to the desert. And what does Bill Keys find when he comes back down here to the desert? Now, of course he was expecting to come back down to the peace and quiet of his old homestead. You know, he probably thought, oh, finally, 12 years in San Quentin, I can't wait to get back down here and breathe the fresh, clean desert air and get back to my wife and kids and, you know, home cooked meals and, you know, mining and prospecting and cattle ranching. But when he got back down here, apparently a terrible surprise awaited him. Okay, I guess him and his wife had seven kids, three of whom sadly died in either infancy or young childhood. So they had four living children and one of them, uh, his son, was 25 years old at the time that Bill got out of prison. And when Bill got back down here, he found that something wasn't quite right with his 25-year-old son. Now, I don't know the name of the son. I wasn't able to find that online, but we'll call him Bill Jr. Bill Jr. apparently was having some mental issues. So when Bill Sr. got out of prison and came down here, you know, said hi to his wife, gave his wife a hug, a kiss, said hi to the other kids. Where's Bill Jr.? Oh, he's out back in the desert. So Bill Sr. went out back looking for Bill Jr. because he probably wanted to give him a big old hug. But when he found his son, well, what he saw was terrible. He found Bill Jr. in the process of cannibalizing the corpse 
of a Mexican day laborer. That's right. He came upon his son eating a dead body. Now, like I said, this is just a theory as to why this thing was built. Uh, but one of the articles I read online said historical records indicate that there was some accuracy to this. So, gosh, I guess Bill Jr. was having a mental episode. He attacked this guy, Miguelito Paz, who was one of the day laborers working on, I think there was a stamp mill. Bill Keys had built a stamp mill out here. And so I guess they were running the stamp mill while Bill was in prison and they had hired this day laborer to help out. And I'm not sure what happened, but when Bill Sr. got out of prison, he came upon Bill Jr. eating the corpse of Miguelito Paz. Terrible. I mean, can you imagine coming upon a scene like that in a beautiful, desolate desert landscape like this? It must have been absolutely horrifying, especially because he just got out of San Quentin and he probably thought the worst of his times were behind him. Now he comes back home to the peaceful desert and, well, now what's he going to do? Uh, it's not like there's therapists, especially back, this was in 1950, I think. It's not like there was mental institutions and therapists around to, you know, help his son. And so, according to legend, Bill Keyes built this bunker with this iron door that latches from the outside to imprison his insane son. That's right, I guess he wanted to keep him from cannibalizing any more bodies. Uh, I'm not sure if he called the authorities or what. It seems like if he... 1950 wasn't that long ago. Uh, things were relatively civilized, I would think, even down here. Even though, sure, back in 1950, Joshua Tree was just a podunk backwater. Like I said, there were no hipsters, no galleries, no art, no cappuccino. Just ranchers and desperados and outlaws, probably even in 1950. Okay, maybe it wasn't quite as bad in 1950. A little bit. You know, they probably had schools and streetlights, maybe. But... Uh, it just seems bizarre to me that he would find his son eating a man and not call the sheriff, at least. Although, you know, he'd been done dirty by law enforcement, you know, convicting him falsely of this murder and sending him to San Quentin for 12 years. So maybe he thought, well, I'm not calling the law. I'm going to deal with this situation myself. Because, you know, he remember he just spent 12 years in prison. He just got back. People, I thought, if I call the police and tell them about this, they're going to blame me for this, too, and I'll get sent back to San Quentin. And so I guess he figured the best thing to do would be build a bunker under a giant boulder, weld a steel door over it, and lock up his son to keep him out of more trouble. I mean, talk about taking matters into your own hands. You know, they say, back in the old days, out in the country, folks have to handle their own business. You know, we don't dial 911. Well, apparently, <laughs> Bill Keys didn't dial 911 either. <laughs> he didn't dial 911, 411, nothing. No siree, he just built himself a bunker and threw his wayward son in here <sighs> to rot? To think about his misdeeds? I don't know, I can't imagine. And, I mean, the legend only says that this was a bunker he locked up his son in. It doesn't go into detail like, well, how long did his son stay in this bunker? And what happened to the son? And, you know, it's just one of those stories that makes hiking around this park fun. You know, it's a fun destination to try and find this hidden, and I mean very well hidden, secret <laughs> dynamite bunker or prison cell, whatever you want to call it, for an insane son. Now, you're probably wondering, what do I think is the true story? Well, I don't mean to be a party pooper, but I'm always kind of a practical sort, and it really does make the most sense that it would be a dynamite bunker. But then you might go, well, then why did he put the bolt on the outside? Well, that's so he could lock it up and put a padlock on it so his insane son or his kids or whoever didn't get into the dynamite and cause a ruckus. Or, you know, keep his neighbors from busting in and stealing his dynamite. I mean, there's plenty of reasons why you would put a padlock on the outside of a little storage facility. I mean, it might not have even been dynamite. I mean, this could have just been a, what do you call it, like a root cellar. Maybe he, his wife stored her canned peaches in here. I mean, who says it has to be something creepy? Well, it's just because it is kind of creepy. And all this graffiti and soot on the ceiling doesn't really help matters any. It just kind of does have a creepy vibe. So even though root cellar or dynamite makes more sense to me, there's just something about this cannibalistic son's prison cell theory that appeals to my... Well, you know how I like to make up these crazy stories. Okay, anyway, uh, I've been down here for quite a while. And poor Matt, Luke, and Victor are still bumbling around looking for this thing. I guess I should try to go find him. 
Hey, it's right here, guys. <laughs> awesome. It's funny because I was just saying in the video, oh, I better go back and find the guys and show them. Okay, it's right up there. I already did. I've been here. I've been here for like a half hour, bro. I can't wait to see what these guys think of this place. <laughs> We just got a, we just so got, got a little pit on it. Oh, you did get, oh, you got so signal? That's it. The friend who sent me, the, uh, actually sent me a, a digital map too. I oh, was, I like, dang it. Well, didn't realize I had it. Well, you had more fun this way. Yeah. Luke, you gotta try it. Oh, well, we never found this. Yeah, go, you gotta go down in it, guys. Check what? Your, yeah, check out your new bedroom. Yeah. It is a new bedroom. <laughs> oh, thank dun, you. Dun, dun, dun. Hussie. <laughs> Where you gonna go now? Are you tired from hiking around? I'm hungry, that's for oh, sure. Oh, okay, well, well, well nah. this was the, this was it. This was the expedition mission. So? We did it. We can go back to camp now and have a beer and have a bite. Yeah. What do you guys think? Are, are, you, are not, you gonna I'm go in? I'm not hungry because I'm just full of adventure today. So. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's what I like about Matt. He's full of adventure that's and right. one-liners. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys know what, what the history of this is? You know, a little bit. You want to, can you lighten us? I, yeah, I'd love to. Would, yeah, that's good okay, well, I've already told everybody Stand watching right. about this. So, well, there's two theories. Okay, some say there was this old rancher out here named Bill Keys back yeah. in the, about 100 years ago. And he had an argument with one of his neighbors. He ended up getting sent to prison. He went to San Quentin. So he left oh. his wife. He had a wife and kids and a ranch down here. Everything. Peaceful guy. Went to prison. Turned out he was falsely accused. So he got exonerated by the same guy who wrote the Perry Mason TV show. It's a weird story. So he got out of prison in 1950 and he came back down here to reunite with his wife and kids. But when he got back down here, one of his sons, he had a 25 year old son. He came upon him eating the body of one of his day laborers. He had this oh, guy wow. working for him. Yeah. So the his son was like supposedly cannibalizing the body. Oh. And so he was insane. Like, he didn't want to call the police because he just got out of prison. So he just locked his son up in this bunker. That's yeah. what that's what some say. Some say it was just where he hid his dynamite. I okay. don't know, what, what do you think? <laughs> wow, I, I like mystery, you know, I guess. Uh, you, you like the cannibal theory? I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta find some more clues and see, see, oh, okay. see, he's see, a, what, see what's He's up. undecided. Yeah. Hey, Luke, what do you think? Do you think he just had his dynamite in here or do you think he stored his crazy son in there? Uh, probably his crazy son. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> and then what's what's even creepier about it is there's there's a there lock on the door. It locks mysteries. from the outside, you know, that's kind of yeah. creepy. Luke, you better clean it up or you oh, might... Oh, Luke, Luke would never do anything bad enough to get put into a yeah, cave like looks, that. He looks real traumatized. Wow, that was fun, you guys. I loved uh, I this whole weird thing. That was cool. Yeah, thank you for story great. time, thank you too, for, uh, honestly. Yeah, it all worked out, man. Yeah. Thank you for showing us the way. Oh, thank you for being good-natured and agreeing to appear in my video. It's not every day I get such nice-looking guys in my video. Normally, I just have these old bags like Vic, you know? <laughs> yeah. Handsome dudes for a change. How about that? There they go. Matt and Luke making their way back through the desert to the parking lot. Super cool. Dad and son loved them. They were they were cool. Vic, huh? me, me and my dad. We yeah, there. it was really neat to see that because you know exploring the desert. everyone now goes, oh, kids today all they do is play video games. No, he's taking his kid out here hiking and <laughs> finding all this creepy stuff and talking to these weird people. I <laughs> endorse that style of parenting. Yeah. Well, Vic, this was another successful mission we did it yeah give me a despite my best efforts <laughs> no no we did it man and now it's time for a ranch water have we earned it yes we have we're gonna head on back to camp have a little drink and uh, have a little relax and just enjoy the fact that we had two successful missions today